Hey, what's up? Today we're looking at Earthrise Cliff Jumper, a figure that's got very mixed opinions uh, in the Transformers community. Just taking a quick look at the box, you got this standard Earthrise artwork and stuff on the back. I really want Hasbro to make wallpapers out of those pictures on the left hand side of the screen. But um, yeah, standard box fare, not much to it. Let's get it open. If you're squeamish, look away. I do rip the box here accidentally. There it is. Uh, and I do it again. There it is. Uh, sorry, I, I don't. I don't keep the boxes. Like this box is gonna go in recycling afterwards. But in the box, you get the toy and then the the backdrop with the plastic thing. I'm not gonna take a look at that because everyone already knows what those do. Now you do get his bazooka packed in there, all put together, by the way, which is nice. And. Cliff Jumper himself. So Cliff Jumper was released in the beginning of 2020 for the low, low Canadian price of $30. He comes in at 4 inches or about 10.2 centimeters tall, and that's very tiny for a figure like this. The detail, however, looks very nice. It reminds me a lot of Masterpiece Bumblebee, the first version, which makes me agree with a lot of people's statements when they say this figure was originally a masterpiece. The head sculpt as well just looks spot on to Cliff Jumper. I'm so glad that we got an actual Cliff Jumper, not a repaint of Bumblebee. The back's a bit plain, and this is the main concern for most people when they look at this figure the backpack. So, what's wrong with the backpack? Well, this thing parts forms, it just comes right off. And a lot of people don't like that. You can use it as a shield if you really want to, but I don't do that. That looks ridiculous. Just peg it into the back. But yeah, it, it parts forms. But on the plus side, Hasbro does my job for me. Thank you very much, Hasbro. But uh, no, it parts forms. I don't really care, to be completely honest, because if it were me, I might have removed that anyways. So yeah, it's fine where it is. Now overall this figure just looks and feels amazing, even the, 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 the paint and the plastic quality feels top notch on this guy. It's, it's got a nice matte finish to the red paint, on the, on like the entire car mode's painted red, I'll talk about that more later on. And it's got this nice matte finish on the plastic which is really nice. It is missing that Autobot badge in the middle there, but once I'm done here I'm just gonna go find a sticker and put it on the front, it's no big deal. It, it just it looks really nice. I had no desire to buy this figure. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen that. But after watching the Lazy Eyebrows uh, video on this guy made me want it so much. And Walmart's just full of them. Also, he's so short. I had to put him on a plastic bowl so you could see the footage in the background. It's just it, it, it's, it's uncanny how small this thing is. Here's a, here's a comparison real quick. Here he is next to um, Sea Spray. From Titan's Return. I would show Brawn as well, but I've lost my Brawn. I don't know where he went, but he's the same size as Brawn. Legends scale. There's no Legends class figures in Siege, but then here he is next to, well, here he is next to this. And you can tell how small he is compared to Voyager Starscream there. He's half the size of Voyager Starscream, but He's supposed to be like that, he's a mini bot, and the, the $30 price you're paying goes to the detail, the engineering, the, the paint, the sheer amount of paint on this, and the weapons, the accessories, because he comes with, you're paying, you're basically paying for the amount of plastic you get in the box, which is justifiable to me. This thing also has a 3mm um, port on the back of it, so you can put it on a stand, I've got Megatron and here's this bazooka. Center in my viewfinder. Yeah, he, 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 he clearly missed the shot there, by the way, let's just, he's bad at that. But yeah, the bazooka comes in a bunch of pieces, you get these little tiny guns here. There's two of them, one with a post on the back and one without, you'll see why in a second. You can hold these as regular guns, but I don't know why you'd want to do that, because of the bazooka. The bazooka is one of my favorite parts about this thing, it's just ridiculous. But you can use these two cannons, they do fit the siege effects in the front, so that's that's nice. You get these little pieces here, which don't really do much in robot mode except for be the bipod for the bazooka, so we'll talk about those in a little bit. And then you get this little sort of like spatula thing he can just hit people with on the flat side, you know, just whack. 
but yeah, that that becomes the back end of the bazooka. So get out of the way. Let's 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 do the bazooka. You fold this thing in half, and your camera goes in and out of focus because you know that's how that's how this works. Um, you peg this into the the front of that, and you peg this other cannon in here, and then you put the bipod into the sides. I love how they actually made it a point to include the bipod, and it's out of focus. And here's your bazooka. This thing's really cool. You can fold this out if you want like a bump stock or whatever on the back, but yeah, it's pretty neat. It's completely oversized, just like you saw in the show there. And he can't bend his elbow or use it very well, but oh geez, camera, calm down. There's the bazooka. Now, the articulation wise, the head's on a ball joint, but it's a little limited, so you can only really get side to side. Shoulders do a full 360 and they go out pretty far. He does have a bicep swivel, elbows bend 90 degrees both ways, uh, the wrists can rotate which is really nice to see on a Legends figure, uh, waist rotation, the hips are on universal joints so they can pretty much do whatever you want, thigh swivel, 90 degree bend at the knee, and the feet can do a crazy ankle pivot. Now problems that I have with this guy, his waist joint here is a little too loose, this is for the transformation, so it does kind of flop around, this hip is kind of loose as well. It doesn't really hold its weight that well, and this shoulder's a little... It's not too loose, but it is kind of loose, so that's a little annoying. But overall, the articulation's actually really good for a figure this size. It, it doesn't compare with the previous Legends figures, because they're the same size. But it doesn't compare with those because it's so much better. The detail, the paintwork, the articulation, the transformation is all way better. It is small for the price you're paying. It fits in the palm of your hand very easily, but... It's still really good. Transformation is a bit clunky though, because um, a lot of stuff has to shift around other things and it doesn't work very well. But the end result, this, Porsche 944, Porsche 924, Mitsubishi said that thing I can't pronounce, looks awesome. I love this body type of cars. This, this, this body type alone is one of my favorite in a car and I, one of my dream cars is the Porsche 944. I'd love to get that at some point. I love the way they did this front end with the black and the floodlights painted and they got the hood scoop done perfectly, the panel lines where the pop-up headlights would be are nice and proportional. I just love the way this car mode looks. And like I said, the paint is a matte finish so it feels very nice, it's not a fingerprint magnet or anything like that. It's a really solid paint job and I've transformed this thing a lot and it hasn't chipped so the paint's very durable. I do quite like this. Again, I can see why this figure is worth the $30, or $20 in the United States, I think. But yeah, the paint's really nice. They even painted the wheels. There's rims in there, but they didn't paint those. Uh, next to Sea Spray, obviously Sea Spray is a hovercraft and doesn't scale with anything, but they're mini bots. They look really cool together. I'm glad to have these, and I can't wait till I find my brawn, because then I can put brawn next to these two. But like I said, small, you'll see a sec. I'll bring Starscream in. And yeah, Starscream's much bigger. Starscream towers over these. Again, it's a Voyager, but this is a deluxe, so it's it's like it's a big difference. And that's what that's one of the things that throws a lot of people off. But I'd say it's fine. It's not like Studio Series Jazz where you're getting something this big and it's poo. You're getting something this big and it's actually good. So this is worth the price. It doesn't have a stand port underneath. I mean, I don't know why you'd want a stand port underneath a car, but it doesn't have one. So that's something to make note of. A lot of the other car modes do have stand ports underneath them. But a clip works perfectly fine on a Tamashi Nations. But yeah, this car mode, I just, I'm in love with the car mode. I love it. It's awesome. You definitely need to buy it. If you buy it just for the car mode, it's really cool. Um, the weapons can store on this thing. It's got a really neat, like, third mode, if you will. The cannons can plug into the top there. But that's the only visible focus. There we go. That's the only visible port on this guy in car mode. Everything else kind of stores underneath. So the spatula, that's what I'm just going to call it from now on. It's a spatula. Can peg into the bottom here. You just peg it in right there. It clips into the uh, hands. Well, the ports that the hands are grabbing. And boom, you got your little skid plate sort of thing at the bottom. Then you got these little tabs underneath the doors, and the cannons can plug into those. They just peg into the sides, and they're now boosters. Focus, camera. Jeez, come on. Now the bipod. There are these... Oh my god, the focus. There are these tabs, or these ports, underneath the wheels. 
and you can tab the bipod in as skis. Now to note, the back of the box shows these skis as being silver, but they're actually black. I wish they were silver, but that's fine. And you get this sort of skiing car thing that was seen in like one episode, which is a very masterpiece thing to do, is include a one episode gimmick as an entire accessory set. But I like it, it's neat. Overall, this car mode is one of my favorite car modes of any Transformer recently. It's much smaller than the robot mode, but oh well, you've got to deal with that. Cliffjumper, he's a small robot. I cannot wait, however, for them to repaint this as hubcap. I will be buying that. I think it's the Generation Selects figure that comes out later this year, if the rumors are correct, so I can't wait for hubcap. Overall, I just really like this toy. i definitely say pick it up. Um, I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link in the description so you can uh, pick it up there if you want. Um, it's available at any local retailer. I got this at EB Games, but they had tons at Walmart. So yeah, definitely check this out, and uh, thank you very much for watching.